Wilson, and this is Focus Forward Business Design. Do you know people that appear to be more financially flush than you would ever imagine they should be? Maybe it seems that you never have the same advantages financially that your friends do, even though you're certain you should be in a way better position than most of them are. You've worked so hard to get where you are and you've done all the right things. So why does it seem that there is never as much extra as you would like when great opportunities become available? Sometimes this is as simple as how different people leverage what they do have. We all know that financial comfort and freedom is not the answer to happiness. We've been told that for years. Have you noticed though that it's usually those that don't have it and are trying to convince us that money is bad, that they're the ones spreading that message? Some of you are probably ready to start a debate with me here and now, and that's okay. But please stick with me and let's see if we can come to a neutral platform. We do know that deep down it is about who we are and how we show up every day for those that we love and care about. That might be our friends and our family or our clients and our coworkers. I get it and intuitively I understand it. I do know and have personally been in amazing financial situations where life should have been all champagne roses and five star chick flicks, but it wasn't. On the reverse side, most of us have experienced times when our finances, for lack of a better word, really sucked. But I won't lie, some of those times were amazing and joyful. Literally, some of the best memories can be from those times of financial struggle. Maybe it's because we learn to make do and we get creative. I don't know. However, given the choice, I will choose to make memories having more money. That may sound really selfish and crass, but we all know that it's easier to live a really big life and share with others and spoil those around us if we have more money. More money is just better and easier. If you're someone that was raised or has lingering beliefs that money is evil, then this video will likely not change you. But I challenge you to look deep at where those beliefs came from and what voices are still telling you this. Money never made anyone bad. It's an inanimate object with no emotions. It can't persuade you to do anything. I think you're going to have to admit it probably goes a little deeper than that. I believe that you can still love those around you when you have financial security. And in fact, it'll likely put you in a better place emotionally since money frustrations lead to a ton of stress and proven the largest percentage of relationship failures are from money stress. So if this is true, and I believe it is, then we better know how to utilize financial leverage. Yep, learning how to leverage what you do have and work with what others have can be a key to being able to grow your wealth and expand your financial security when great opportunities present themselves whether it be in real estate investing, the stock market, business partnerships, or equity buy-ins, the list is literally endless. Now, full disclosure, I'm not a financial advisor, nor am I an accountant, and I do not have a crystal ball. So please, use this as a reference and always check with your financial professionals when making decisions. Everyone's situation needs and goals are different, so there is never a one suggestion fits all. So maybe you own a company. Leverage has slightly different meanings in personal financing, investing, and business. But in both scenarios, leverage is the use of debt to help achieve a financial or business goal. Very simply said. That being said, there are some basic ways to leverage what you currently have that may allow you some breathing room or free up your funds to expand your resources into some new adventures or opportunities. We're going to talk about three ways that leverage can open up some wonderful doors for you. Let's start with number one, leverage in business. So businesses typically use leverage to launch new projects, finance the purchase of inventory, or expand their operations. So for many businesses, borrowing money can be a lot more advantageous than using equity or selling assets to finance transactions. When a business uses leverage by issuing bonds or taking out loans, they're able to maintain full ownership in a company. Unlike when a company takes on new investors or issues more stock and they lose some of that control, leverage can be especially useful for small businesses and startups that may not have a lot of capital or assets. By using small business loans or business credit cards, you can finance business operations and get your company off the ground until you start earning profits. There are oftentimes credit cards with zero interest for limited time periods, usually 12 to 18 months, 
where you're using the bank's money for free. This is awesome. This is a great way to keep your personal cash free or invested, making your money while you're able to grow your business. So for an example, is a real estate investor that flips homes. I've personally witnessed many investors purchase a home, get an interest-free credit card to do the improvements, and then sell the home and pay off the credit card before interest has accrued, sometimes even before the first payment is due. So now let's be very clear about this. I am not encouraging you to do this or guaranteeing the same results. It's just an example. So do not go crazy and go buy six houses, houses rip them all apart next week, and expect to sell them the following week. Another great thing is that when you take out a loan or a line of credit, usually the interest payments are tax deductible, making the use of leverage even more beneficial. Again, please consult your tax advisor for your spe specific deductions, and I'm gonna to have to tell you that this entire video. When evaluating businesses, investors are gonna consider a company's financial leverage and their operating leverage. So financial leverage is the best indicator of how much debt a company has in relationship to the amount of money its shareholders have invested in it. This figure is really critical to know because it's a good indicator if a company could repay all of its debt through the funds it's raised. A company with a really high debt to equity ratio is typically, typically going to be a riskier investment than a company with a low debt to income ratio. No different than your personal situation. All right, number two, leveraging your personal finances. This is where it gets really fun. When it comes to your personal finances, you may be surprised at how often you do use leverage. Whether you borrow money to acquire an asset or potentially grow your money, you're using leverage. You might use leverage when you do one of the following. If you own a home, when you purchase that house, you probably purchased it with a mortgage. You're using leverage to buy your family's dream home. Or maybe it's an investment property that gives you monthly rental income while appreciating year over year. Over time, you build equity or ownership in these homes. As you pay off more and more of the mortgage, this is how you earn a return on your investment in real estate. What about student loans? There's a lot of them out there. When you borrow money to pay for school, whether it be college, vocational school, or other specialized training, you're using someone else's money to invest in your education in your future. This boosts your earning potential, and the higher salary lets you recoup your investment. Finally, what about purchasing a car? If you need to buy a car, you can purchase with a car loan. I will encourage you, though, to use this type of debt very carefully. Cars are typically assets that depreciate, which means their value decreases rather than increases, like real estate. However, typically a car is not bought as an investment and more is a need for transportation. So as long as you go into it knowing that you'll likely not earn on your investment, you're not gonna be disappointed. And owning a car may be a necessary way for you to earn an income. So there are a lot of other ways to move your money and your loans around to benefit your end of the year financial situation as rates change on various credit opportunities and should carefully be evaluated to ensure that you never put yourself in a compromising situation of not being able to meet your financial obligations. That being said though, always analyzing where you're at, at the, and what you owe, that's so financially responsible and should constantly be on your radar in terms of how to improve your financial standing. Finally, investment leveraging. Leverage is the key in offering investors a powerful financial tool to increase the return on their investment. Investing using leverage comes with risk and investors need to utilize tools that help them ensure the risk is worth the reward. Leverage and in investing comes with potential for great loss, and new investors need to really incorporate the advice of financial advisors and experts in whatever field they're investing in to make sure that they've taken into consideration all the pros and cons. However, learning about investment leverage is a fantastic way to feel that you have some ability to change your long-term financial situation, whether it be for long-term wealth, sending kids to college, or retirement. I hope this, is, this has given you some useful information and at the very least some things to dig deeper into when you're looking at your financial future. Please click below to like and to share. Share this thing out there with five friends. Hashtag Focus Forward Business Design. As always, your comments and your questions are welcomed and encouraged so that we can personally answer each and every one. Please remember as you go through your day that it's always your choice to focus forward. Let's be revolutionary.